Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today on the channel, we're gonna be talking about stoves. Now a stove has three main functions for survival and preparedness. One is to cook your food, two is to boil water and make it clean enough to drink, and three is to provide you with warmth when paired with the appropriate shelter. Now there's four different types of stoves. These are the main types of stoves we're gonna talk about today. We have our solid fuel stoves, we have our liquid fuel stoves, multi-fuel, we have our gas powered stoves, and then we also have our natural materials or wood burning stoves. Now there's a variety of other stoves you don't see here from thermoelectric to uh, alcohol based to rocket stoves, you name it. There's a lot of stoves on the market. These are the four most common used and most popular. We're going to talk about which situations you would use each of these in because the applications range from short-term day trip use to long-term even indefinite use in the wilderness. So let's talk about that today. Okay, so once again, starting from the top, we got our Esbit stove. This is a solid fuel stove. We have the MSR XGK multi-fuel stove, so you can burn a variety of different types of fuel here. We have our MSR wind burner stove, which is a isobutane stove. And then we also have our firebox wood burning stove. Okay, so let's talk about the pros and cons of each of these. Now, over here on your right, we have the Esbit stove. So this burns these solid uh, cubes that you see here. And uh, one of the benefits of this stove is that it is very packable. It's portable and it's very lightweight and it's very inexpensive. So you can see it packs flat and you can put several of these cubes inside here and it just pops open like that. Then you can put your cubes on there and these are going to burn for, they say, 12 minutes, but in my experience, it's more like eight to 10 minutes. It depends on the wind. And wind protection is gonna be a, a big factor in the performance of all of these stoves, as you're gonna see when we do a water boiling test. Now you can see that this is adjustable. So if you, if you have a smaller pot, you know, you can point it inwards a little bit. If you have a larger pot, then you can extend it outwards all the way. So it's flat like that. So right now we have just our standard Nalgene bottle. If you don't have one of these Nalgene bottles, they're great. You can throw them right on a fire, no problem. It's a single wall stainless steel bottle. Now, one of the other benefits of the Esbit stove is that it's odorless and it's quiet. In an emergency situation where you were worried about security and you didn't want to draw a lot of attention to yourself, those two things are going to be very, very important because some of these stoves can actually be quite loud. And if they're emitting an odor, uh, that's another dead giveaway of your location. So that's one of the great things about the Esbit, odorless and very quiet. Now, some of the downsides of the Esbit stove is that the material it's made from is like a cheap metal. It's not stainless steel or anything like that. You really do get what you pay for. It's really intended to be used with these cubes only. You probably could put some kind of tinder in there, maybe a very small uh, alcohol canister or something like that, but it doesn't uh, lend itself to be used with different types of fuels as well as some of the other stoves that you're gonna see here today. So it really is something that you would put in an emergency kit if you wanted something which is uh, slim, you know, low profile, low drag, then the Esbit stove is probably where it's at for short-term emergencies. And I would definitely recommend packing at least 12 of these cubes because it's probably gonna take you a couple to bring a half a liter to a liter of water to a boil. Up next is our MSR XGK liquid multi-fuel stove. So this uh, uses these bottles and you can fill the bottle with anything from kerosene to diesel to white gas, also known as Coleman fuel, uh, unleaded gasoline, jet fuel as well. So this is a, a great versatile liquid fuel stove. And don't let the jagged edges uh, deceive you. This is a very rugged, uh, well-built stove. This is uh, a stove which is trusted by militaries around the world, and you can get different size bottles with it. But the versatility and just the build quality is second to none. And how it essentially works is that you fill this with your liquid, and it's going to, when you turn the valve on, the fuel is going to go through this hose here, and it's gonna go up through this coil. When you first light it up, 
it's just going to be like a liquid flame. But as this heats up, as this coil heats up, it's gonna vaporize that liquid fuel and it's gonna turn it into a gas and then it's gonna burn just like a propane or butane stove. It actually works incredibly well. Now I will say that it is quite loud. That's one of the downsides of it. And I would liken it to viewers sitting next to a river, fast moving body of water. It can be pretty loud. Not loud in the sense that you're going to necessarily attract attention beyond 50 to 100 feet even, uh, but in the sense that it's going to uh, dull your own senses. Now, like I said, the benefit is that this thing is built like a tank. You're gonna be able to find a variety of different fuel sources to use with it. There is a bit more setup. It's not just plug and play like some of the other stoves that you're gonna see here. But uh, I would say that this would be something which would be suited to a long-term situation, an emergency, particularly in an urban environment where you're going to have access to those different types of fuel. I think that this would be ideal for a medium-term scenario. As we all know, gas, liquid gas, inevitably is going to go bad. Uh, it's gonna break down over time. That's why they have fuel stabilizers. I've done an entire video on fuel and, and storing fuel that you can see here. But that's going to be my only concern for the long, long term. This would not be my Mad Max stove of choice, but it would be my intermediate, you know, maybe there was a disaster which forced us to evacuate a region for a few weeks. I think that would be, this would be an ideal situation for that. So up next, we have our isobutane stove. Now the benefit of this, and this is, I should say, the stove I use most frequently, because it's so easy to use. You, you simply you know, turn the valve, the gas starts flowing, you light it up and you boil water. And this is gonna boil water the fastest out of all these stoves. One of the downsides is gonna be that once you're out of fuel, this basically has almost no function. You can't refuel these canisters. You really do have to go and find another canister in order for this stove to work. So it's really low on the versatility dimension, but really high on the efficiency and practicality function. This is my go-to stove when I head out to the bush for a day. It's fast, it's easy, and it's consistent. Other thing is, is that it is odorless, but it is also kind of loud. It's so operational security wise, maybe not the greatest. Uh, some of these have a built-in, what they call piezoelectric lighter meaning that you don't actually need an external ignition source. This particular model doesn't, but that's also a cool feature because if you do happen to not have an ignition source, you don't have a lighter, you don't have matches, or then you can ignite this without anything. The one downside with this in a winter environment is that you are gonna get some performance reduction. So that's where your liquid fuel and your wood fuel is going to excel. But for anything I'd say above minus 10 degrees Celsius, Something like this is going to work just fine. Okay, so last but not least is the Infinite Stove, the Mad Max Stove, the stove that if you're going away and you're never coming home, you're gonna to wanna to put a stove like this in your pack. Now, the great thing about these types of stoves is that most of them pack flat. This one is the Firebox. It's a personal favorite of a lot of different people. It's somewhat modular, so there's boiled plates, there's uh, grill plates, there's extended grill plates. There's a lot of different things that you can do with this, okay? I've seen people bake cookies on these things before. It's definitely possible. Uh, the, the downsides are gonna be, of course, that you have to find your own fuel. And if you're in an environment where there's not a lot of smaller sticks around, you're not gonna be able to use this stove, obviously. But it's great if you do live in a wooded environment because you're all, always gonna be able to find fuel. Uh, some of the downsides are that it is going to smell. It's going to be an uncontrolled fire. It's not gonna be consistent. There are different ways you can do it as I've demonstrated in the past with the Swedish fire torch. You can get a little bit more consistency there. But for the most part, it's gonna be a pretty erratic style fire and you're gonna be emitting a wood smoke smell, which of course can potentially carry for miles if you're being pursued by a band of cannibals or all American prepper and his good old boyfriends. That's something you're not gonna want. And of course there is going to be um, setup time, 
there's gonna be a lot of soot involved, so your hands might get a little bit dirty. So there's a lot of pros and cons. I mean, the number one pro is the versatility factor. You can burn a variety of different types of wood in it, use it for a variety of different functions. If you were in a winter climate, something like this would be ideal because it's going to not only provide you a way to boil and cook your food, but it's gonna provide you an indefinite source of heat. And it's gonna be a way for you to make a contained fire so you can conserve more of those BTUs as opposed to an open fire type system. So to summarize then, we have our Esbit stove, which is our really, really short term emergency stove. I wouldn't even trust this for going out on day hikes and stuff like that. That's what this is for. This is your weekend warrior uh, day trekker type stove. This is something you're gonna use in case of a extended regional disaster. This is something you use for a national disaster. In terms of price, this is the least expensive. This is the second least expensive. This is the third expensive. And this is the most expensive. Now, in terms of the fuel cost, ultimately the fuel cost of this is gonna be cheapest because you can use diesel, you can use kerosene, and those fuels are going to be relatively cheap compared to something like this, where it might cost you 10 bucks for a propane canister like this, even though it's gonna last you quite a while. You're not gonna have any cost of fuel here, but you're gonna to have to do the work. And that shouldn't be understated because it is going to take a, a, a bit of work to do this. And you are also going to have to maintain the fire. Some people don't mind doing that, but uh, myself personally, I have a lot of things that I'm usually doing when I'm out in the wilderness. And I just like the set it and forget it aspect of uh, the isobutane wood stoves or something like this. So let's turn these stoves on and let's see what they can do. There we go, now it's gonna start too. So this one's already almost boiling. So we already got a boil on this one. Uh, they're all kind of at the same pace. This, this one requires constant, constant attention. So the results of our boil water test were as follows. Wind burner, XGK, firebox, and last was the Esbit stove. Now it's very hard to try to maintain all four of these stoves at the same time because it is a very windy day today. If I was just focused on one stove, I'm pretty sure I could get the boil time up a lot. I think the XGK and the Esbit stove would have fared a lot better and the firebox as well. So once again, I would say that for a small emergency kit, go with the Esbit. If it's just a you know emergency kit, you don't want to be bothered with. This is not a volatile fuel. The Esbit cubes, you can put them in a pack. They're going to be good for life. The liquid fuel, on the other hand, you're probably not going to want to store this in this form. This is something that you're going to want to be cycling out the fuel as you need it. It would have performed a lot better had I had the windbreak on the whole time and was I a bit, if I was a bit more focused just on maintaining this fire, it would have done a lot better. This is set it and forget it. There's even a bit of wind protection here, but this would also benefit from having some sort of wind barrier around it as well. And the firebox, once it gets going, it's going, you get some good coals in the bottom there. And all you gotta do now is stick some wood in there and that thing is going to light up really easily. 
So for a long term, if you're thinking about an inch bag that said, I'm never coming home, the world has ended and everything's gone to hell, the firebox, some people like the ambiance of just having a wood fire stove, but it is gonna be a little bit of work. But the more you get used to it, uh, some people really come to enjoy these types of wood burning stoves. If you're somebody who can't be bothered with that hippy dippy kind of stuff, then go with this. If you're want to go commando style and you want something that's built military spec, you go with this. And if you're just somebody who doesn't want to be bothered with any of this, you want to throw a bug out bag in the closet and never probably use it, hopefully never have to use it, go with the Esbit stove. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments section below. Be glad to answer those for you. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. The best quality products at the best prices. Use discount code SURVIVALPREPPER, all caps, all one word, for 10% off. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.